actually work through the process way. If you spend, I mean, if you use Vim already and you spend an afternoon trying this out, you will wonder how in the world you ever live without it. So, for example, you've got support for your W and back, for change word, delete word, for find in the line, right? So let's say I've got blah, no, it's going to insert mode here. Blah, blah, blah. All right, I'm going to go back. We're back to the beginning of the line. Find me the first W. FW, find the map for that first W, right? So you've, you've got pretty decent, I'm not saying it's 110% of BIM, but boy, is it a lot more than Bash, and if you don't do this on a regular basis, I mean, I don't know why not. You use them already. Um, you can do things like uh, replaces. So um, I don't know if you know that in Bash and V shell, colon, you know, SH point, exclamation point means run the last command again, right? Well, you know what? Let's run the last command. Well, first, let's see what the last command is, right? Let's, uh, you use uh, J and K if you're in normal mode to go back and forth through your history of commands. So I'm, I'm hitting right now K, 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 right? So my last command was git checkout master, okay? Let's run the last command. So let's replace. Uh, master with uh, mug. <coughs> it now pulls up the last command <coughs> for the replacement for me. This is the difference between bash and VSH. In bash, if you do any of this stuff in Vim mode, it will now run the command. I prefer to see it first and hit enter myself. And that is one of the things you cannot do in bash that irritates me to no end. Especially when you get into things like, let's go find a big command. also do things like um, hit, I have it mapped to V, letter V in normal mode, will actually open that whole command in Vim. <coughs> so we'll get into, this is a command I used to run in my old job. It's basically saying, in a, in a <laughs> loop, wget, this URL. <laughs> All right, that URL over and over again, get it 10 times and tell me how, how long it took, right? Every time <coughs> I had to change that URL for a different URL, I was like, son of a, hold down the lead. However, it's in quotes, right? <laughs> Everyone knows that if you're in Vim, and let's say I put this in quotes, and I want to go back and change this, what do I do? C I quote. New URL goes here. When I leave, it puts the command back at my prompt for me and go. Right now, obviously, this missed something. But if you're ever doing anything with any long commands, be they repeated, chained, W get, or whatever in the world, being able to like, take that whole prompt thing and put it in Vim, that's freaking powerful, right? You can use everything you use already with that, right? So, Vim support is just beyond belief. <coughs> now, we all, we all have to prompt, so we all type a lot. What do we all want to do? We want to type less. We don't all want to walk around with little wrist braces. So, there are a lot, a lot of little things that VSH does to let you do this. So, for instance, you don't have to type C to D. If I actually put in a directory and hit enter, it will see me to that directory for me. Right, it even tab completes, right? So I'm gonna do var log. So it'll actually tab complete things knowing that, okay, you want a CD to that directory, right? So now let's go to, you know, back to, well, okay. Beyond that, anyone know what push me and pop me do? Bash has this, everyone has this. Push me, pop me, right? Mm -hmm. You're sitting in a directory, and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go check another directory for something real quick, but I'm gonna come back to it. So you do push me, and it takes the current directory and puts it on a stack. Then you CD to whatever directory you wanna go to it, right? do whatever you were doing, and then you say pop me, and it will turn you back to the last directory you were on. Okay. And you can do this multiple, multiple times. You can actually have a stack of directories to work with. CSH has auto push me, because who the heck remembers to push before you go over to that other directory, right? No one. So if you look, right now I've been doing all this directory stuff, and there's a command, uh, dv, there's actually, I forget what the full command is, dv is my shortcut for it, which shows you the directories on your stack. You can see I have 0, 1, 2, and 3. <coughs> These are the directories I've been swapping between. If I want to change back to another directory, I can just hit tilde and then that number. So tilde 2 takes me to that directory. All right, so if I've been hopping all over the place and I'm like, you know what, I want to go back, but I don't feel like typing slash var slash w slash log slash whatever, whatever, you just go. And, and of course, pop D works the same way. So pop D will tell you which ones are on the stack and it'll pop off of the previous one. So you can see now I'm back in the past. So uh, that is an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, time saver for CDing to new directories and things. All right, next up, tab completion. We all, everyone loves tab completion, right? This is why we love Linux. We love all these great tools. There's nothing worse. So 
So let's go home. And I, I'm using CD just for clarification. Normally, I would just go home. Um, I want to go. I have a directory here called Floss Weekly where my podcast is downloaded to. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and CD Floss. Oh, you know what? It's all uppercase because the stupid podcatcher made it uppercase, but I didn't have to type a single uppercase letter. So no shift, baby. That's saving those that those wristbands are going away. <laughs> I'm not using them. Um, <laughs> This right here was enough that I had a Mac user at Pi Ohio come up and go, thank you, I have now switched to ZSH. Because if you're on uh, a Mac, which has a gob ton of like mixed case directories and stuff, trying to remember the casing of the Mac uh, OS underscore blah blah application data where the A and the D you know, are capitalized and crap, we don't care. Because ZSH will just complete it for us. Right? And then how many people use the find command because can't use grep because it won't find enough, it won't go like deep enough, it won't find all the crap you want. Um, <coughs> ZSH has support, I call it super blobbing, I forget what the actual term is. Let's see with my example. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I want to do an ls, and based on that, I want to grep out all of the files that end in Mako, which is the templating language I use. Okay? <coughs> so I'm going to ls dash al qsat to directory in here. Now I'm going to do star star. Star star means do this recursively. For every directory you find, keep doing it. All right, so I'm going to do star star slash star. And then <coughs> let's go ahead and, and do this like I haven't shown you the other stuff yet. Grab, make go, pipe, bless. All right, notice that now, so there's the directories here are templates, and you've got in the root, basically it goes through and it recursively goes through every directory running the ls command, and then piping it to grep, whereas you would have to resort to using the find command if you wanted to do this in bash. All right, I don't know what the, bu the, the, bu the find flags are. I forget, because for 99% of my use cases, I can just do the star star blobbing in the SA, <coughs> and it does it for me. So no more no more messing with find, and having to do man find again. Call me a list, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll get to that, I'm getting to that right now, actually. ZSH has most beyond awesome aliases. How many people have alias commands in your bash RC? Right, you know, you say alias, you know, top <coughs> equals run top with a certain set of parameters automatically for you or whatever. That's great, that's great. You can do little quick aliases to run commands for you faster. However, I like working with more than just commands, okay? So this dash G is actually says create a global alias. So this says alias dash G a log. I want that to be equal to slash bar log Apache 2. So that no matter what I do, if I just do a log, okay, well, I gotta define, define it first. Um, all right, so a log is Apache log, obviously. Uh, a log will just take me to that directory. It, it's acting as if I type that at the prompt, and we know we don't need CD, so it actually just took me there. But what's great is that you can actually use this in other commands, so I can do, ls a log and get an ls directory of that that alias. <coughs> right, so how many guys have like directories you use a ton that even though you know you, you you have no way of shortening those up, you can create these global aliases and then use them all over the place. Uh, next up, again using the, the G flag, we have what we call pipe aliases, and that's where the command was. Right? How many people pipe things to grep? All the frickin' time. Pipe space G R E P. Right, what if we can just replace that with capital G? <coughs> right, so I'm going to run this ls command, a log, and I can do pipe, grab, and let's type it for, grab it for three. Right, there are two files with G. Or I can do a ls, a log, and then just do capital G. Yeah, sorry. G3. So that will pipe, the, it, it inserts the pipe part in there. And that's great, you're like, okay, I can shorten my grep, that's really nice and all. But when you think about it, what do you pipe to? Grep, less, head, tail, sort, word count, <coughs> vim, right? You can pipe the results of things straight to a vim command and then have it in a text editor. And then I've actually started using act grep, which is a Perl based kind of grepping thing. So that's A. So think about how many times a day you might do any of these things and you can shorten them all to one single character. That's a lot of piping through your day that you can save. You can do this in ZSH, bash has to suck. <laughs> All right, this one was brought to me by Matt. I actually didn't even realize this one. Um, you can create aliases for things based on extension using the dash S flag, okay? So in this case, I'm creating an alias saying that anything that ends in a .php extension, I want you to automatically open it in gvim, 
or if it ends in a dot PDF, automatically open an X PDF. Okay, so let's go find the PHP file. Um, All right, so here I've got this update SP click summary.php. I didn't yeah. put anything in front of it. I just put in the file name. That's it. Tab complete the file name. Boom, it opens up in Jim. Right? And you can do this for as many extensions as you want. So let's go ahead and let's look up my. Don't get frightened here. Don't worry about this. Just <laughs> this. All right. So here are all my pipe extensions. So here, anything in .py, open in Gvim. Anything RST, t text. Uh, anything that ends in HTML, <coughs> open up in Chrome. Any JPEG, PNG, or GIF, if I just type the file name, opens in image magic display uh, command. All right. So for all of these things, I don't have to type the actual command anymore. I just type the file name. And I, I don't even type it. I tap complete the file name. And it opens in whatever preferred you know, tool of choice, and those are all completely customizable. How does it deal with the structure where you don't want to run it? Well, so obviously the, the point there is that if you don't type anything in front of it, so if you wanted to run a shell script, normally you do dot slash and then the file name, right? Um, if you wanted to execute it, what you might do is say that the command to run it in front of would be like slash bin slash curl would be the command. You know, anything that ends dot sh or something, you know, or, or dot, I don't know what the curl that you would do for an extension. Yeah. So you can, you can put any command you want in front of it. You just have to set that up as your alias. Um, and yeah, obviously you only get one per thing because I can't guess that today I want to edit it and today I, tomorrow I want to I run it. So. Um, and then everyone loves tab completion. About a year ago or a year and a half ago, Bash finally updated their tab, tab completion to where it was like almost bearable. You get things like anyone tab complete their app get install some you know, package manager like, yeah, we have completion that does something. Uh, VSH tab completion will blow it out of the water. Just crazy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and work on this project here. Um, this project is in is in Git. I, I'm in a master repository, right? So I'm going to do Git, and I'm going to hit tab complete. Notice it says, I hit tab, and it goes, do you want to see all the possibilities for Git? And I'm going to say, you know what? Give it to me, baby. It will let every dash dash flag, it will show you the flag <coughs> and then give you a quick summary of what that flag does. So, man git? Why would I man git? I can just tab complete and get the list. So, you know, I'm going to do, you know, uh, git show is one of the commands, for instance. Now, I have a command and an option to the command, and then I'm going to tab complete. Notice that it also completes down the structure that far. It knows that the show command is looking for a branch name or a file name, and it will give me options based on that. So you can see that I have branches in this Git repository for uh, something, for Widix, for, uh, you know, these are different branches I have. It will actually tab complete parts of this stuff. And then not only that, <coughs> but now I can also get what are the dash dash options of the Git space show, right? Bash won't touch this. It'll do the first level, right? It'll tab complete and maybe like a flag dash T or something. It will not go down this far at all. And so, what makes this stuff work? Oh, the, so the next thing would be um, grouped options. Let's do that git uh, tab tab again. And now let's go back up to the top here. All right, the first thing, if you see this dash dash, these are actually aliases from my git profile, my git config file that I have defined. So the tab completion is so cool, it knows which things I might want to do from my, you know, my shortcuts that I've created. So it might want to complete uh, git ld, which will give me a log dash p option. Then it goes in and says, okay, these are all the options for git commands. Right? That's handy and all, but how many people SSH to other machines throughout the day? All right. All right, notice now, when I do SSH and tab complete, it will actually pull remote host names from my current session of SSH, it'll pull it from your, dot, your, your SSH dot config file, it'll pull it from your uh, slash Etsy slash host file, and not only will it complete hosts, but if in your config or anything you actually specify the username to use, it will actually tab complete the username part of the SSH to this host. Right? And then it gets into, so these are all login names that are in uh, like your Etsy uh, password and stuff. So these are options of things that I might want to be able to do. So I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to tab complete our Harding at some server. Tab complete. These are the servers I have for my config or whatever on a machine currently that I can use. Right? Bash won't touch that with a 10-foot pole. Not at all. <coughs> so if you do a lot of SSH different machines, 
get the bad axis. I'm done. <laughs> and the way all this is all the way all this is done is that um, there are actually uh, a function for each um, part of the tab completion. So if you do, uh, and they all begin with underscore underscore. So in this case, you have underscore underscore get something. These are all the different functions that are built in to providing tab completion to get. Why this is cool is that it's actually not hard to write one of these things, and I've actually done it. Um, write tab completion for something that didn't have it. Actually, I went it over tab completion for one of the scripts that I actually use both personally. And I'm like, you know what, I want to be able to tab complete some stuff. And I'll show you how that works in a little bit. All right. A lot of people use multiple terminals. The power users now. I've got one terminal, and I open another one, and I run big, giant commands <coughs> in the first terminal. And I go to the second one, and I'm like, oh, crap. Go back to the first one, highlight it, go back over, copy and paste it. In ZSH, you can sh you can share your history between as many terminals as you want. You have as, as you have open. <laughs> that would be nice. Okay, so here I've got I've got this here. I'm going to open these tabs up. These are all open beforehand, right? <coughs> so let's CD home. Let's LS my home directory. This is my home directory. Okay. And I'm going to go over here. If I hit up right now, the the last command was whatever I last ran in this shell. But as soon as I hit enter and I hit up, it pulls the shared history. Mm. So let's say that on the different, each different terminal, you're running one command over and over and over again, right? You don't want it to replace that every time. But if you hit enter to do a refresh here, like over here, the last command I run, you know, hit enter, you know, that was the last command I've now run. I can go back over here, um, hit enter, my last command I ran was over here, I did the working command. So it commits every time. So uh, if you ever do that kind of stuff and you find yourself wishing that you had one command in your history <laughs> on another terminal, SH is for you. Bash won't. Uh, it's through your shell. I, I don't know. I've been trying it with different screen sessions. Okay. I have, I, you know what? I have tried it where I have screen with multiple windows open, and I go through those screen windows, and that will work. Okay. That's so I don't know if you do like open a terminal, do screen here, SSH in, do it again over here. I don't know if those two SSH connections would talk or not. No, that, the one that I, I do want to SSH. And then, and then you have the screen. It, it, will, it will share across that. Basically, what happens is, you know, that in your bash, you got a dot, dot bash history file, right? But what it'll actually do is you have a, a, a single common dot ZSH history, um, and uh, it will actually go through and um, uh, write to that file across all the different terminals and then give you those back as an option. So, you know, that you don't have any of that problem where like, you did a bunch of stuff in one and it never hit your history file because you had a different one already open. That doesn't happen. Um, the other cool thing with history file you can do, and this is kind of, I don't know if you have like a giant history file um, like I do, you can give it, there's two different size options, okay? You have one that says, when I ask you to search the history, I want you to go back this far, right? So if I say search for previous commands from, you know, that have this word in it, go back 10,000 history commands. However, in that history file, I want you to keep 50,000 commands. Because you know what? If the end of the world comes and I'm like, I have to find that command, <laughs> it, I don't want it slowing down or messing up my search as it is, but I still want it in that file so I can grab that file for that command down the road. So that's kind of a very cool, powerful, like, you know, if you're really into the history like that, to be able to set different marks Does on that. Does this type of thing have to go to time stuff? I've always wanted to do that. One thing to know what you ran, it's nice to know. Yeah, so this is a, I think this is a timestamp here, like and then I'm not sure what the zero's for, but this is basically my history file across all yeah, of them. Yeah. So the, the history in ZSH is, uh, is crush bash any day. Um, so uh, you have, what do you have? You have hist, which is actually a command line command that you can give options. Um, actually, you want hist with alias, I think. Um, history. <coughs> so, so here you go. Print it in different time formats, a pattern searching and all that. And then, um, Everyone uses Vim, right? How do you search in Vim? Slash, slash character, yeah. right? So if I go into command line and hit slash, it gives me a question mark down there. <laughs> and then I can say, you know what, I'm looking for something with push. And then how do you cycle through search cycles? And, yes. and, and, yeah. and, or capital N to go back. Um, so the Vim list of that all is, is awesome. All right, so that's that's my, my plug for ZSH. You should be using it, because as you can see, this is the tip of the iceberg, baby. 
<laughs> this is like the stuff that I use day in and day out. Like I can't, I don't know how people live without it anymore. It's people are like, oh yeah, I was doing whatever. And I'm like, oh, you're kidding me. I, I forget people work that way anymore. I, it, it's working. Um, one thing you saw me doing, and I want to give a little plug, is that I, I, I kind of, and any of you guys Python developers, you know, you heard about virtual and what? A virtual amp, okay. And virtual amp is kind of a cool thing where you can like create these little Python sandboxes to do your own coding, right? So you have a sandbox, you have this idea of a project. And you can have multiple of them. Well, this guy wrote this cool thing called virtual amp wrapper, which gives him little shortcut commands to hop in from project to project to project. And whenever you do this, it, it changes your your uh, shell to, to you know point to the Python version that's in that sandbox. It does all this automatic stuff for you. And I got thinking, you know what? That's great and all, but I don't do Python all the time. I do PHP projects, I do text projects. What I really want to do though is just say, you know what, I want this command to say, uh, jump to any project that I define. And so work it kind of came out of this. I took his code, his, his shell scripts, and butchered it to no end. And uh, it's still in a state of butcherness, but it works. Um, what it does is it, it allows you to create project directories, right? In those directories, it will give you, it'll create for you an activate, doc, uh, an activate script and a post, uh, and a post deactivate. Right, and in those things, you can do, you can put in commands for whatever you want. So, for instance, uh, if I go and I work it, tadmin is a project I have. And now, first, this is the ZSH completion I wrote. I wrote a function that searches the directory where all my projects live, which is um, slash uh, home slash source. Right, that's where all my projects live. It will actually search for all the different uh, project names that are in there and tab complete those for me. So, I'm going to go work on tadmin, and it'll tab complete. Notice that it's starting up Postgres for me. All right, so let's go look at the post activate command in here. All right, it's just a shell script. I tell it I want you to export some shell variables so that I can do some commands with them later on. Um, it creates a shortcut command, qunit. If I type that, it will actually load the browser, launch the browser with my JavaScript <laughs> unit tests preloaded. Um, I then have it go through and run a uh, c tags command across the project. So that whenever I work on a new project, it will rerun c tags in the background so that my vim tab completion is up to date. Right? And then finally it actually starts Postgres for me. Which is great. So now let's say I want to work on something else. Let's go work on this uh, presentation stuff. Notice that it's turning off my Postgres server, right? Because I don't need Postgres running all the damn time. I'm not always working in Postgres or MySQL or Apache or anything like that. Right? So now I, it saved me the trouble of changing directories. So you know now I'm over in Home, our Harding source of ESH samples. Um, it yeah, shut down stuff I didn't need running, and it got me back to my, my next project. So it's kind of cool because you can use it for whatever else you want. Uh, so for instance, I have a project RFVT. This was where I checked out the dev package for a terminal and I wanted to rebuild it and all that. You know, you can create these projects anywhere. So let's go ahead and create a project. Um, the P1 here is that this is actually pulling from two locations. I have projects in bin. No, no, sorry. Config and so if you look, I actually have two places to put things. One is configs, like my vim config, my dot files config, and all that. If I want to go work on those, so let's go work on pyvim. Uh, this is my actually let's do that. So this is my you know vim config, whatever. So let's go back to the uh, <coughs> samples here. Anyways, so if I want to make a new project, I do make work it dash p. I tell it which one I want to go in. One is my source directory, and I'm going to call it uh, <laughs> mug project. All right, notice that it creates a directory, checks me, it puts me in that path, and then here are my two scripts that I want. So let's go ahead and run post activate, and let's run. Uh, Uh, for instance, 
the ZSH auto completion for your project names was pure and simple. So I did it. And when I looked at how to do it in Bash, I cried and said, <laughs> never mind. I don't need it. So if you were a Bash user interested in working in projects much faster than you might be now, we would love to see you come and check out some of the code. It's just shell, shell commands to do everything. Uh, and if you might be interested uh, to help out, that would be beyond awesome. Because uh, we like to see this. Uh, Matt has helped me out a ton. Um, it kind of like it got to where it works for what I aim to do, right? I want to hop from project to project to project and have stuff done for me automatically. So I've kind of I'm just kind of done much with it since. So I just figured I'd do a little plug for a cool shell based kind of project. So, questions, concerns? How many people have asked get ZSH? Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty productive. Oh yeah, no. I mean, it's it's uh, it, it, you know, it, yeah. If you're the the VCS info for this stuff is only if you're running within the last two or three Ubuntu versions. Um, so I mean, they 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 work on stuff. They make it cooler and better. And uh, yeah, I'm worried that VSH will make these bricks so awesome. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> it is beyond true. It, it will make you SSH to a remote machine and start to type a command and go no. I was <laughs> at my new at my, my new job. Uh, we're like we have these boxes, these Fedora boxes with SSH into to do things, and I'm like, oh, this is gonna suck. This is gonna suck. So I, I happened to actually go in there and I, I lost my home directory and I saw a .zshrc file, and I'm like, no way. Typed in zsh. I had Zshell. I was like, yay, this job rules. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I love them. Go Fedora. I don't know if it's by default or if, if someone installs it. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not going to ask. It's an extra package, so almost for a move, I will cry. Um, but at the end of the day, if, if you're doing this kind of work every day, I understand the concern, like, hey, what if I go to someone else's machine? How often do you do that? Would you rather save yourself 90% of the time you spend on projects and deal with the 5% of, oh, man, that's Okay, so there's this great, 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 great book, even if you're a Bash user and want to stay a Bash user, From Bash to ZSH Shell, or Z Shell, is the name of the book. Uh, black and yellow cover, I think it's by A-Press. By A-Press. Awesome book. I, I, I skim books usually. I read this one cover to cover. All right. <laughs> it talks about the history of the shells. It goes through each chapter and says, this is how to do things with both Bash <laughs> and ZSH. The problem, which is very interesting, is like halfway through each chapter, there's a big headline, from now on, ZSH only. And it goes into all the extra stuff ZSH can do that Bash can't do. Mm -hmm. And every single chapter is like, let's say you want to talk about globbing. Globbing is fun. Here's how you do this stuff, and you do this stuff, and you do this stuff. From now on, we're going <coughs> to Bash. This is just the cool thing ZSH gives you for this. And I mean, like, I'm a, a half the chapter. It's not like a page of ZSH special features. It's like, here's the next 20 on what ZSH can do that Bash can't. Um, I would check out that book because I, I did read the whole history thing. But at the end of the day, they start to blur after it's been like a year. So they're, you know, they talk about the gay shell and the sea shell and all this kind of stuff. And I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any incompatibilities between shell scripts and bash? So that's part of where my work at thing got in. So like, um, Z shell has very powerful arrays. You can actually in place sort and stuff with them, um, which I thought was awesome because I wanted to sort my tab completion for the list of directories that um, I output so that they're alphabetical, right? Except then when I had a bash person <coughs> try to run work it, they're like, oh, it doesn't work because obviously I used the super cool arrays, the sorting, and it wasn't working in bash. So definitely, like I said, in the book, you, you, there's a lot of com common stuff. What about the other way around? Are there I haven't run into features? I haven't run into anything. So I, all my systems, the SH is the default shell, I, all the default you know, tools and stuff, no one yelled at me yet uh, or anything. It, it generally seems like wide, wide, wide majority of the time, <coughs> there's common and then the extra ZSH rather than, you know, diverging trees of, like, we have to go through this stuff. But that, that book the, from Bash and ZSH is great for, like, shell scripting to, like, realizing tricks of things. I mean, it's just really well written, and, and not just, like, a, here's, like, a cookbook of cool things, but, like, the hows and the whys and when you want to use it. I mean, it was just, I don't know, I, who knew? I, I've got, like, a half dozen different Questions? Let me know. Um, again, um, oh, where am I? I'm on 
Well, and uh, there's a little bit of like, difference like in the setup. Like, it's worth the time to try it out. But a lot of things are like, oh man, I want to waste an hour. <laughs>